Hello and welcome everyone. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for being here at my live stream on YouTube. I go live every Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time unless I'm on vacation or something else comes up but generally I'm live or I have a premiere video that you can come and watch. If you're watching this as a replay after the live stream has ended and you're on a computer, you can look for the little gear at the bottom of the screen and change the speed. If you're on a mobile device, generally the little three little dots at the top, you can use those to change the playback speed to get through a little faster because generally my live streams last around two to two and a half hours. I want to thank Robin for being my moderator and administrator and note taker throughout the live stream. She is generally my one uh, right hand woman, if you will, and I am so thankful to have her. She also is an administrator of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Occasionally, if she's not available, one of the other administrators will come over and help me or a friend will help me moderate the video today. If you have questions, please feel free to put those in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those questions. If I don't see it, please ask again. Or if you know the answer to somebody's question, please answer it. Hey, if you have a YouTube channel, please feel free to share with us by saying, hey, I have a YouTube channel and this is what I do on it. You won't be able to share a link, but you can at least talk about your YouTube channel. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. If you are having a great day, let us know. But honestly, we don't want the negative what is going on in the world right now because we are here to escape that, to be inspired, to be friendly, and have some fun. During the live stream, you have an opportunity to earn junk bucks. You can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have once Junkie Joe is up, because this is preliminary and I've pre-recorded this. Once you have 2,000 junk bucks, you can redeem those by typing a ward and you can get a $10 off coupon to my shop. How do you earn junk bucks? Just by being here, chatting with us. So make sure that you speak up in the chat so that Junkie Joe registers that you're here and by playing the in chat games and then also whenever you make donations. Occasionally I have raffles. In fact, right now there should be Junkie Joe coming up. You can type exclamation point raffle just as that says and you can enter the raffle to win 200 junk bucks. If you make a donation during my live stream, do go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. You can see the name scrolling across the bottom here and create a user user account. Once you've created a user account on my website, make sure that you use the contact me form and say, hey, my name is on YouTube and I donated. And then I can get you added to the YouTube donator membership on my website. What does that do? Well, a member of my website in the YouTube donator membership gets 5% off orders in my shop, gets several digital downloads for free, and during the live stream, when you donate, you get a chance to win the journal that I raffle off at the very end. Throughout the live stream, I will have different raffles giving away prizes. If you will type exclamation point raffle when you see those come up, then you can have a chance to win those items. We're going to get started here in just a moment. Thank you so much for being here today. When the video is over, come back and leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about today's video, or if you have questions and you're watching this as a replay, use that comment section down below. Also look in the description box to links to the Friendly Junk Journal paper, People Facebook group, as well as by Linda Israel, my Instagram, Twitter, my website, and generally I try to update the products that I use and those links are in the description box as well. All right, well, let's get started. I think we're live. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
I see that Robin and Margie and Julie have spoke up and Sheila, hello. Thank you so much, Robin, for always being available to help me with these live streams. <clears throat> and hello and thank you to everybody else that comes in. Hey, speak up in the chat if you are here today so I know who's here. If you're watching this on a replay, I'd love for you to leave some feedback down below in the comment section after this live is over. Oh, I guess I could show you. Will it focus? Focus. I, I painted some nails green and I have stamped some little shamrocks all over them. So that's my nails for today. I, uh, let's see, I went to the Friends of the Metropolitan Library book sale. And if you are looking for a collection of books to use in your junk journals, I highly recommend that you reach out to whatever your library system is where you live and see if they have a book sale. Generally, most areas have some kind of excess book sale. In fact, here in Yukon, there is a book, um, it's a, it's a sale, resale shop for books, used books here in Yukon. They're only open like the second and fourth Saturday from like noon to five or something like that. But generally you can find some pretty good books. And sometimes they have specials where at the little shop that I go to occasionally, you have a paper sack and you just fill it up and you pay one price. Sometimes it's according to the prices of the book. So I thought I'd show you a couple of the books about four. I, I got about $20 worth. The paperback books were, I had to think about this, the paperback books were a dollar and the hardback books for two dollars and then they had another area that you could go into and they kind of called that their uh, collector's books. Basically they were a little bit more pricey. They had anywhere from you know a dollar to a couple hundred dollars. There's some really old vintage books over there. Those went for a lot more and I didn't have a whole lot of time so I didn't and I didn't need any more books. That's what Henry kept saying. I, you don't need any more books. Well, I only want a few. <laughs> so I got this as a brand new Bible that I'm assuming that's Spanish. I haven't looked at that, but it is a brand new little Bible. I wanted some little books. So I got that one. And then I've got a super mini Eng Spanish and English dictionary because I thought these pages would be fun because of the size. And then I got a German to English book. It's a little bit older. Oh, and I, I also got some books on, where'd I put them? They're over there. I got some books on poetry and that were that size that were free. And what else did I get? Um, oh, I got some sheet music books, some song books. I thought those would be kind of fun. This is a neat little book. I got it by accident because I was after some small books and this happened to be in the bundle. And I liked it because it has these beautiful full color photos. Let me get to the page where they start. They talks about what kind of flowers are out there, what their categories are, has little drawings of them, and then it says the flowers. So each page has a picture, full color picture of the flowers, and then has a description over on the side. And I thought this would be really good to use to make postcard size uh, journal cards or to make little elements that I could put in my junk journals. And that was called the Auburn Society Pocket Guides, Familiar Flowers of North America um, Eastern Region. And it normally sold for $8. And I thought that would be a good one. And then I picked up this. This is one of the last things that I picked up. When I saw the cover, I was like, oh, I have to have that. And I opened it up and look at these beautiful color photos of hummingbirds and I thought this would be a good book. I think I want to read it first before I actually cut it up because I want to read a little bit more about hummingbirds and I thought this would be a good book to cut up. Isn't that gorgeous? Wouldn't he be pretty if you fussy cut him out and put him on there? No, there's, I, I don't think anybody's chatting at the moment, Julie, and <laughs> we're just getting started, so people may not be chatty yet. <laughs> 
So I thought this would be a good book to have. So lots of beautiful photos to choose from. So I thought I'd share that with y'all. I'm going to put these down out of the way. My floor behind me is getting full. So I started this accordion fold journal a while back. Um, I think it's been a year almost that I started it. And basically what I did was is I took some uh, chipboard and I covered it with book pages. And then I made a accordion fold piece out of book pages and then I started covering it with other paper. So this measures six inches by eight and a half inches. And the accordion portion of it is a quarter of an inch little spine. And I did it that way so that I could basically make little journal inserts. This one I have not stitched. I just slipped it under some yarn. So this is a good idea if you are still working on a journal, you want to have all the contents put together, but you don't want to make it permanent just yet. Maybe you're still decorating it, or maybe you like having the ability to take the pages out and write on them flat. This is a great way to do that. And I just tied it with some yarn. And I can, after this journal is put to completely together, I thought I could bind these groupings or signatures or journal inserts together and then slip them under there. And that good way you could take them out. So I thought what we would do today is kind of uh, decorate. So here's one that I haven't put together. And here is a element that I thought would look good for a pocket there. And I've got a pocket over here. So let's kind of decorate these pages. All right, let me move this out of the way. Oh yeah, I got that. Put that right there for now. I need a drink of water. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for a second. A lot of the digital papers that I use were from the Amarillo Rose. I use a lot of different other elements from Calico Collage. This page is actually one of those tear off daily planners. I think I got this at like the Dollar Tree a while back and I've just been using them in my journals because it works out when I fold it in half. You've got this side, you've got a bank blank back and then you have this side. So let's decorate that side of our page. Hey Janice, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. See ya, see ya, see ya. Okay, there we go. Nothing special. We're gonna, I think we're having spaghetti for dinner tonight. I think Henry's gonna stop and pick up a couple of ingredients that we didn't have. Put that back in here. All right, let's put that down here. I've got um the Victorian panel stencil that I thought I'd put on here. And you know, since I can see that it's got a purple, probably um, seedless preserved because I have a tendency to like that one. And here is my brush. I am going to put on some gloves so I don't stain my hands with ink. So how is everybody? Are y'all good? Have you had a good week? Slow cooked beef casserole. Ooh, that sounds good. So that's Plandovers, Julie. I call those Plandovers. My in-laws, my father-in-law is not much for Plandovers. I think he would prefer to have a full meal every day that's completely different than the one yesterday. But Henry and I are a little more practical and don't want to spend every single night cooking something. Well, he does a lot of the cooking. He's a little bit of a control freak. I did help last night uh, with our dinner. But we like to plan our meals in such a way that it's just the two of us. So we will cook something that will have leftover and we can have it either the next night or maybe the second day after. And that that seems to work best for us. It also helps keep our costs down. I went to the grocery store to pick up some ingredients and I'm just flabbergasted at how much stuff costs these days. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, wow, it's 
so expensive to buy food. If you are frugal, you can cook and make things that are quite tasty, but you've got to spend a little bit of time cooking, right? You like the slow cooker, you just chuck it all in and at the end of the day, voila, it's done. Those are good. We have, we do here, we have what's called 15 bean soup. And it's basically a collection of dried beans. It's 15 different types of beans. And you soak the beans overnight and rinse them really well. And then uh, you put them in your crock pot or slow cooker, however you want to do You could also do it in a pressure cooker if you want. And then we add um, cubed hams pieces. We add a um, uh, can of mild Rotel which is basically uh, tomatoes and some mild chili peppers. Then we'll add some, uh, I, I call it Polish sausage. Some people may call it kielbasa sausage. It's not a super strong sausage. And we add onions. And then we will add, uh, let's see, beef broth or water to it and let that cook and simmer all day. And at the end of the day, when we go to eat it, we'll cut up fresh avocado, fresh tomatoes, fresh onions, and we'll put cheese on it and we'll crumble some tortilla chips over the top of it and stir that in. It's really good. <laughs> we like that one a lot. And that usually lasts us a couple of days. All right. So this is, what do I want to put on here? I've got a couple of stamps laying out here just because they were already on my desk. So let's do, I'm going to use the, um, I, I, because it's my favorite, pretty much. This is the Henna Rose. It's one of my favorite stamps. To kind of give it a little bit of a background, I need to um, re-ink my stamp pad. I should have done that earlier, but I forgot. Whenever you buy your ink pads, buy the re-inker when you get it. Yay, Margie! Thank you so much. Um, go ahead and buy the re-inker with it. And that way your ink pads will last you longer. I'm very fortunate that I have a name brand ink pad. So I was able to go on to Amazon and reorder because this is my last bottle of reinker and it's barely coming out. It's enough, but it's barely coming out. So I've got I've got some brand new ones that they shipped me. So I'm I'm prepared. What is that the Always be prepared and not like a Boy Scout, Girl Scout motto. I was not in either of those. My brothers were in um, Weebelows. I think that's what it's called, Weebelows, because they were too young to be in Cub Scouts whenever they learned about Cub Scouts, and they did that a lot. Uh-oh, I think... I don't remember what it is, Julie, but I think they're supposed to be something you can add to the beans that keep you from having the wind effect. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to stamp in the corner here. Kind of stamp over here. You know, I think I'm going to go ahead and go down in this corner as well. And then this corner as well. I don't always do it. I'm going to do it today, but I'm going to add some distress inks to the edges of the page, which I feel just kind of helps give it that aged look. Another thing that I could have done but didn't, and I may do that the next time I coffee dye, is I'll put a few of these in my coffee bath to dye these papers. That would make it a nice vintage -y color and still give us plenty um, of of space to write without, you know, destroying the paper with a pattern too much. Yeah, I, I know that there's something and I can't remember what it is. And I don't know if that you have to put in it or if it's just a little tablet that you have to take to help. So, okay. I, I would investigate. I don't know what they have in Australia, but I know they have some here that's like, is it called Beano? B, B E A N N O. I don't know if there's two N's or one N. That might be something to look for. All right, so let's add a little bit of something in the corner. You know, I haven't got this down in a while, so I'm going to do that today. I'm going to flip through it. This is my little fussy cuts. I've been putting them in these little 5 by 7 envelopes. 
and I know I have some that are already cut up so I was just going to kind of flip through here to see if there's something that I felt would work well and I may have moved them that's usually what happens isn't it they didn't get put back into the container you had a sauerkraut last week and loved it but it doesn't like me and I'm <laughs> <laughs> the cats didn't like you either. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Hercules, every once in a while, he'll get the tooties and he will toot and he'll startle himself and jump up. And he's like, what was that? <laughs> it's pretty funny. I think these are all, yeah, those are all bigger. They're not actual fussy cuts. Well, there's a few, so maybe I'll look at that. I talked about you, Hercules. He heard me. He's got his head up looking at me. I wonder what I did with them. I know I have more. I also have these that are rubber stamped images. You know, another thing I have is I have a few of these watercolor images that I haven't used in a while. So maybe we'll use one of those. Maybe we'll put it down here on the bottom and make it a little tuck spot. That'd be a good idea, huh? All right, so I think I want this, and let's see what we have over here. I have some blue irises by Calico Collage. I think that would look pretty there. So let's set this aside. Oh, and I have, um, this is out of a book. What if we were to make that into a journal card? I think that would be good. And I'll get out my words. I did make this today really fast. Um, I stamp out my little words occasionally ahead of time. And sometimes they get lost in my little thing. And I can't really see them because they are stacked one on top of the other. And basically all I did was is I took a piece of cardstock that would fit within. I happen to have it laying here. I'm going to make another one. And then I have a piece of acetate. And I laid these on top of my cardboard, cardstock. And then I just drew lines, getting the spacing correctly. And then I used a paper clip to hold this on here temporarily. And then I stitched on all those lines. And that gave me that little guy which kind of helps organize my stuff. You can't stand enough to cook and clean. I understand, Margie. My mother-in-law has a hard time. She's, of course, she's 77, and she uh, she's really, her osteoporosis is really, if I'm saying that right, Please forgive me if I'm not, because I'm a dumb okey. Um, she's really hunched over, and it hurts for her. And I've been trying to convince her to get a really wide stool that she could sit on while she's at the counter, but she hadn't done it yet. So I may have to start doing some research and find one that I think would work for her. That way she can use it. If it has arms on it, it's wide. She can use that to get up. She could sit there. She could fussy cut, fussy cut, <laughs> cut up uh, veggies or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to put this here and this here. How about, um, this is my story. Maybe we'll find a little piece of paper to put right behind that. And I'm thinking of putting my thoughts linger up there. Okay. Put this back over here where I can find it again. Uh, let's get down my... I'm liking that I've done this where I have pre-made cards in here. Let's see if this will fit. It's a little bit too small, but I have these so I could cut it to fit. I could also collage. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let me see. No, nope, I'll have to trim it. So let me trim that one down. Make all my pieces fit. All right, let's see here. So if I make that, 
and then just trim off maybe at three inches maybe two and three quarters no let's go to three inches so that would go in there so we could distress that I have some little strips of paper let's see if I've got one that would fit our needs I've got this pink so what if I put this is my story with the pink paper I think that would look good it give it a good pop all right let's get some let's get some uh, distress ink and we'll ink all these pieces up and start gluing them together this is a book page so it's rather thin so what I might do <coughs> pardon me is back it with another piece of paper just so it's a little bit thicker because I'm going to have it hanging out the edge so let's add some distress inks and then we'll glue it together okay and we'll do this while I have it in my hand Should I add some color to the edge of this paper so it's not just the distressed ink? Maybe we can add a color. I could put a pop of blue on it. Maybe that's what I'll do and then that will help kind of bring it together on the page. Yeah, it, I have a lot of pre-made, pre-cut papers, panels. Um, in standard sizes, artist trading card size, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. I've got a bunch of four by fours, and I think I have a bunch of three by three pieces. Let's do this. I've got the blueprint sketch, and I'm going to grab my blue. All right, let's see if I can do this without getting my fingers all messy. Just adding a little bit of blue to the edge. And I usually, um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Margie. Um, I think if you have leftover papers, Julie, that is the time to cut them into your go-to sizes and then create a little storage container to hold them so you're not really cutting up brand new paper you've already cut it for something else so then you just cut up the leftover bits and put those in your little holder I think that looks good just adding that little bit of blue You need 10 by 14 and a 3 inch pen. Wow, that's pretty big. All right, I think that'll work there. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll glue these together. And then we'll glue down this blue piece. I creative Okie. Thank you so very much. Yeah, I'm kind of creative sometimes. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do this piece. I've just got a piece of a book page laying here that's cut at a one inch strip. So I'm just going to glue that right on top. And let's go ahead and glue this piece down. All right, so I think I'm going to go that way. So I'm just going to put a little glue in the corner to make that a tuck spot. Yeah, you do a master board, Julie, to get the size paper that you need. You know, glue uh, papers together to get to that size and then collage all over it or whatnot. And then you'll have the right size you need. Commercial break. Yeah, I, I looked at it and I didn't see a way to turn those off. I could tell it when I wanted to have the commercial break. Okay, I think I'm going to put it like that. 
and I'll just glue it mostly on the bottom and that'll give us a little bit more space to hold this together. And if you wanted, because the way I glued it, you could put something here and something there. So if you wanted layers, that might be something we'll do. I'm going to glue this one down. I know I have a little bitty envelope that I made. Maybe I'll get one of those out. So if we put that in here, like that, and then I'm not going to put it all the way down yet. I saw those in here. Maybe if I put it like that. Okay. So this is a faux envelope. It's a piece of paper that I cut and just folded it up. So you have some writing space. You can add some photographs, whatever you like to it. And then that just folds up and we can stick that right there. How's that? Ah, thank you, Julie. <laughs> All righty, gluing this down. Henry and I have been watching some, um, I guess you call it a documentary. It's a, from the National Geographic. We've not watched about whales and their migration patterns, as well as sea turtles. I didn't really understand this until I watched this show that sea turtles go lay their eggs, probably about a about hundred, and then they go out to sea. And then however long the incubation is, the um, sea babies hatch. Generally, all the moms deliver their babies at the same time so that they leave the beach at the same time because they said one out of a hundred actually live to maturity. That's crazy, right? And they struggle because they're sea turtles, but they were born on land and they struggle to get to the water. And then they spend 30 years at sea. They live, they, they travel. And then when they turn 30, they will mate and go back to the same beach and have their eggs and start the cycle over again. It's really crazy. I like that. That turned out pretty, didn't it? So we got those pieces. All right. So there's one little piece. This was um, a couple of Norella's papers. Uh, I can't remember what this one was from. It might be from her, her rose papers, I think. And then this is from her, um, it's a unicorn dreams, unicorn dreams. I think that's right. That's what this one, but I think this one is okay the way it is. So I'm just going to leave it. This is a piece of stationery. I think we can add something to the backside so it's not so plain. Now let's lay that out flat and maybe we'll get another stencil. <laughs> that fit barely, but not really. Okay. How about we'll do the wild four stencil? So it's got little flowers that we can put on there. All right, so what color should we put on the back side of that? You know, just because there's a little bit of yellow on this side and I haven't done yellow in a long time, let's see if I can find my yellow. Let's see, is this it? Moss. Yellow. That back up there, and let's find the yellow. I have mustard seed, I think that would look good on there. 
All right, so I'm going to get my gloves back on again because I don't want to get yellow fingers. Then I'll look jaundice, right? <laughs> You're alive! You didn't get wiped out by the glitter boss or whoever it was. <laughs> Junkie boss. Oh, too funny. All right, so kind of center that in here. All right, go in here. Do, do, do. Just a stencil in. What are y'all working on? If you been working on anything in particular recently? I am preparing for spring. I'm a little late, but I think we'll be okay. My cellar in my home, which is a storm cellar and we never use it, I decided to beg my husband Henry to help me out and I set it up as a temporary greenhouse. We have some heavy duty, I guess they're called grow lights. They're lights for plants and I asked him to help me set that up and I put a bunch of seeds in different containers. Oh, hello, Esther. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I put a bunch of seeds in different containers so that I can hopefully have a nice collection of flowers in a few weeks that I can put outside and not have to spend as much money at the plant store. I like that yellow. It's kind of a subtle yellow. All right, so I think this paper is really thin, so I'm not going to add any other embellishment to it. I'm just going to leave it. So we'll put that back in here. This is some Tattered Angels dyed paper. Say what, Linda? Tattered Angels dyed paper? Tell me more. So I make a hot water bath and I add Tattered Angels. I'll just take my bottle and pour a little bit into the water bath. And then I'll dunk my papers in. If you have time, let them soak for a little bit. And then I'll just peel them out and then lay them to dry. I'll even put them in my oven if I want to speed up the process. Or if I'm close enough to be able to go to the shop, I'll take it and use my heat press to uh, dry the papers. You can also use your iron to dry them. You're working on watching videos all day and night, trying to get the courage to start a channel. Oh, cool, Esther. You know, basically, I just tell you to have fun with it. Do what you love. If you haven't named your channel, I would recommend that you name it as such that if your, um, if your projects change or evolve and they're not just all one niche, then make it a kind of an all-encompassing name. But if you only plan to do one thing and that's the only thing you ever plan to do, then name it to where it's easy to find like that. And then just have fun, okay? Oh, cool, cool, cool. That's cool, Julie. Experimented with faux foil on a paper bag and scratched it up a lot and rubbed the ink pads lightly over to get the, that texture. You're doing the 100 day challenge. You're doing a video a day. Wow, Sheila, that's busy. That's a huge commitment. All right, let's see what we want to put on here. Um, I've got these uh, music notes. I can't remember if I called it music cluster. I don't remember, but I'm just going to stamp it a few times lightly. I'm not really pressing super hard. So just do it a couple of times just so it has a little bit of texture there and then on this side let's see I have little hearts so I'm just kind of kind of adding a little bit there there we go mm -hmm. all right let's add got some stamped flowers. Maybe we'll get a couple of those. I've got this one and this one. Or should I do a different color? I have this color. Maybe we'll do that so we're not doing tone on tone. 
And I see that I have some leaves. So I'm going to grab a couple of leaves. Maybe like that. Oh, I have a little dragonfly. Maybe we can use that somewhere. Something like that. I'll set this aside for a moment. And I saw here a moment ago a piece of sheet music. What did I do with it? I thought I saw a little piece left over. Of course, it's not right there. So let me see in my trust container. I have a little piece of him and all that might work. Okay. So get my metal ruler. I have several rulers here. I have a wooden ruler, a plastic ruler. I have a somewhat new metal ruler, another metal ruler. I even have a ruler that has magnification on it. I still have yet to get or make a, a deckel edge tearing ruler. Maybe one of these days I'll do that, but I just haven't done it yet. Okay, I'm just going to tear off a little bit of the edges. Didn't have to be perfect. So let's see, let's cut or tear. And we'll tear it right about there. And we'll just kind of do it in half. There. So then if we were to put this down, making a little cluster. How's that? I'm not going to save these little pieces. You're welcome to do so. I have so much stuff that I've saved. I don't need to save anything else. <laughs> okay. Uh, commitment. You know, and here's something you could do, um, Esther, before you start is think about what you want your name to be and then record a few videos. Record five or six videos. Edit them if you can. Get them all ready and then schedule them and post them one after the other. It could be one a week, one every day, one every two weeks, whatever it may be that you feel would work for you. And then that way, because you have several ahead done, then you can concentrate on doing new content because that's where the 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 biggest pressure I feel of doing YouTube or any videos is that you have to be prepared to spend the time and if you're not then your followers will kind of be disappointed because you didn't put out any new content and it takes time to do the videos all right, so I'm going to put that right there. And I think I want to do like something like that. I want to go from the top down. I think I'll go that way. So I'll put a little glue on the back of my leaf and put that into position where I want it. And then I'll glue the flower on top. Don't keep any scraps. Yeah, I mean, I have I have lots of scraps. Now, if it's a usable size that could be used, for example, like this piece of music, if I had, you know, one and a half inch strips of music left over, then I would say that I have a little bin, you know, that I kind of put some stuff in. And then I sort that bin by color into my boxes. But when it's just a tiny, tiny little scrap, I it goes in the trash. <laughs> You're very welcome, Esther. And another thing is have a thick skin because people are rude 
And most of the time, it's because they're jealous, because they're not brave enough to try and make their own YouTube channel. So they're going to say rude comments to you. Do not take it to heart. Block them. Delete the comment and move on. Don't ever let anyone make you feel any less than who you are. Okay? Okay. You're very welcome. Now let's put that right here. Let's glue that one down. I don't think we have to put any text on here, do you? We could. We could put notes or something, but I think I'm going to leave it. And then on this side, I have this little dragonfly. And maybe I have something else in here. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, I see a butterfly. What if we were to put just a little butterfly in there? I think that needs more, though. I don't know. I feel like sometimes I go a little overboard. Maybe I'll change this. Maybe this is what I'll do. Like that. Nice little layered effect. And then what could we put over there? <laughs> Saw some little pieces of paper here. Maybe there's something that... I don't want to cover up the stamping, but I think if I cut this piece, that would be a good little piece to put down. Yep. Yep. They help you in the long run. That's for sure. Just let them be haters. But don't ever take it to heart. Don't ever feel like you're anything less than what you are. Okay. Okay. I think that'll look good. All right, I'm going to distress ink the butterfly because I just saw he's not distressed. Yet yeah, haters tune in every time. I've, I've had my share of haters over the years. <laughs> and I ignore them. You don't, don't even respond to them unless you just like controversy. If you like the drama, be my guest, but I do not. <laughs> okay, glue this piece down. This is a book page that I stamped. I painted it with acrylic paint, and then I stamped over the top of it, and then I used watercolor paints to paint in the stamped images, and just had fun. Yeah, I'm able to remove bad comments, Julie. You can delete them. You can report them and you can delete them. All right, let's put that right here. All right, let's glue this one. Oop, almost lost the butterfly. He went flying. <laughs> he is trying to escape. Okay, go like that. Well, that's just, they're just, they're sad, angry people. <laughs> and they have to have an outlet. That's just what it is, Julie. <laughs> yeah, they just like to make waves. They, they feel that if they have a negative attention, it's attention. I think I'm going to put it down low. Like he's landed on the flowers. Okay, that looks pretty cute. Keeping it somewhat simple here. What do I have here? This time I have a book page that has um, flowers. Bell flower. Bells, coral bells. Bells of Ireland. They're just different flowers.
Hey, April. April. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see. Um, We've got these colors going on. I also have this page that I picked out. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe we should collage on this one. Ah, I've got some pockets here somewhere that I started. I wonder if this would be too big. It would stick out a little bit, but I think that would look good on there. Okay, and then on this side, what do we want to do? I've got, I've got some pink paper here. Oh, these are some pieces from Calico Collage. Let me put that in half. So if I were to glue that down, I've got um, this little strip. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Just to kind of frame the page. Let's trim this to be the same size as this page. So I'll kind of line it up with the edge and cut it. Okay. Uh, thank you, April. I uh, I stamped some little shamrocks on them just for fun. Right, this piece already has some distressing surrounded, but this one does not. So let's add some distressing to that piece and we'll glue it on there. We can write on this page the way that it is, so I'm just going to glue it down. All right. So glad that y'all could come by and hang out for a little bit. And I hope that it inspires you just to get out your supplies and create. All right, so I'm just kind of mushing that down to the bottom. Use my foam folder. Where are you going, Hercules? And then I'll just glue this right across the top. All right. Okay. Let's put that right here. Smooth it out. Like so. All right, let's grab a, uh, let's put a word. How about, um, on this day. There, just keeping it really simple. Gotcha. And be an encourager. And that's, that's just it. You know, we have more people that will encourage others instead of bringing them down. We could do so much better in this world. It doesn't take a lot of effort to be kind and say a kind word. I think I'll leave that like this. All right. So what do we want to put over here? I thought I saw a scrap. I did of some coffee dyed paper and it almost fits perfectly. You won't see the book page behind, but I kind of like that. I mean, if you wanted, you could um, make it a little smaller. I'm trying to see if one is looks better than the other. Let's tear it. So I'm going to tear a little bit off uh, right about there. And let's go ahead and tear around the edges. Is that what I want to do? Yeah. My nose is all upset today. Oh, 
It didn't, didn't make it. It just slipped right out. Now put pressure. Under pressure. And I want that teared, torn look on this side. Teared look? Torn look. So I'm just kind of laying that on there. That'll be alright. That's fine. It's okay if it's a little jagged. Jaggedy. Yep, doesn't cost anything to smile. That's right. Alright, so if we were to put this in here. Like that. I have a little piece of paper here. Maybe we could put a little piece right there. This is where these little scraps can come in handy. Saw another one here. Here's one that's kind of a teal color. We could put it above or below. So what do you think? Do we want it back here or do we want it here? Let's add some distress inks to the coffee dyed paper. Ah, uh, thank you so very much. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. That's very kind of you. Well, it doesn't have to be complicated, y'all. I mean... This this was scrapbook paper. That was a gel print. Rubber stamp, rubber stamp, rubber stamp. This was using a punch on some mixed media paper. This was a stencil. You can figure out creative ways. You don't have to purchase a lot of fancy supplies. Yeah, you stocked up on allergy beds? Yeah. <laughs> You're being scammed. Being scammed, Margie. We need to get the money to you. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's do this one. <sighs> ah, funny. Okay. Now, if we were to put this down. Do we want to put anything inside here? <laughs> I think I'm going to use this um, leaves and berries and kind of just stamp it in archival ink. Um, what is it called? It is uh, sepia. It's a brown. So that's in here. So let's grab it. Come in here, Niall. Let's move that out of the way for a minute. It'll kind of come in from the corner. It's really light, so we're not interfering with journal space. Kind of put it in the middle. Okay. Move this out of the way. <laughs> oh, let's glue that down in the middle. Oh. My back is sore from moving dirt. My back and my hips. I was tired after doing all of the pots and little... Um, cell pods, I guess you could say, that you could put dirt in to grow seeds. Sure, I probably could have bought all of it, all ready to go. It costs so much more. <laughs> and this way, I feel like I had a hand in it because I grew them from seeds. All right, so let's put this here and this here. And let's find something fussy cuttable to go around it. Let's see what I've got here. It's kind of a rose. We could put that right there. Here's a, um, not a petunia. What's the other one called? Pansy. Pansy. 
pansies like cooler weather. So do petunias. Uh, uh. Enter them all. I, I agree, uh, Esther. You know, I, I like seeing those things pop up out of that soil. And if you follow me for very long, you've probably seen me post pictures of my garden. And I have a lot of things that come back on their own because they're perennials. But sometimes the annuals need a little help. So I like to plant the seeds and put them out there. I think like that. All right, let's glue this one down. Using up those scraps. Johnny jump ups are the smaller pins. Yes, they're teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. My daffodils are blooming. I should have taken a picture, but I think they're almost done. But they're blooming right now. I like it. All right, so we'll fold this in half. Okay. So then on this side, I want to make this a pocket. So I need to add some tabs. And I've got a couple of pieces of book paper here. So I want to make a tab going this way and this way. So first I'm going to glue across here. And that way I have the full height and width of my journal of my pocket for my journal. So I leave about a half an inch hanging off. Hang on there. Book pages have use. You love book uh, daffodils, but not their scent. Interesting. And and what is it about their scent that you dislike? I kind of like this way they smell, but I don't always bring them inside. I'll go out and look at them, kind of sit in my yard. I've been working off and on on a little area that I'm adding some new seating in my yard. The seating was actually located in a different spot in my yard. And now I'm going to move it and make it a, a new spot. Grab another to sit. It'll be kind of shaded in the late afternoon because it gets pretty hot here in Oklahoma. Okay. Put this down. Hey, Bonnie. Welcome, welcome. So good to have you here today. Okay. Makes your nose itchy. Well, then, yes, you want to stay away from that then. If it makes your nose itchy. Don't want to be itching your nose. <laughs> Don't want to have itchy nose. You can avoid it. Okay. Again, I'm throwing away these scraps. All right. Smooth this out. Get that a moment to dry. That over. This is one of my Franken page or master board pieces where I took lots of scraps and attached it to a piece of paper and then cut it down to make a pocket out of it. So I thought I would just put that right here. Let's add some distress inks to the edges of this piece. John Quirrell's fragrance is a lot worse than daffodils. Oh, it makes it hard to breathe. Gotcha. Hello, Peony. Welcome, welcome. You're, you're cold there, aren't you? Chilly, chilly, chilly weather. I think it's also chilly in Australia, isn't it? Uh, oh, hey, Amanda. Isn't it really chilly in Australia, Julie? Hello. Today it's 80 
What does it say? It's up to 86 degrees right now outside here. And then tomorrow we're supposed to be in the 80, 81. And then overnight it's supposed to drop to 24 degrees Fahrenheit. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay, I like that. Let's glue this one down. Okay. Put that right here. I like how that offset on the page a little bit. So we have this pocket that loads this way. I said, isn't it cold there, Julie? 80 degrees here in Texas, Louisa? Wow, hot, hot, hot. Are you supposed to get the cold snap too on, I think it's Wednesday. It's 54 where you are, Margie. Well, you're way up north, right? Thanks for being here, y'all. All right, so let's gonna put this journal card in this pocket. Oh, good, it fits right inside. So using a book page, coffee dye paper, some scraps, some digital images from Calico Collage. This is one of my digital downloads of a butterfly. And I had a scrap of it, rubber stamp. Okay, so that looks good. So I'll put that in here. So this is one of my stencil pages that I'd already stenciled on a while back. You know, I think this one is just pretty enough that all I want to do is add some distress inks to the edges and we'll just leave it the way that it is. Not every page has to have a whole bunch of uh, embellishments on it. No, staying above 55 as a low. Ugh. Staying above, that's good. That's good. You're not, see, we're supposed to get down to 24. Summer hasn't given up yet, Julie. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're you're in the heat, heat, heat. That's right. You're not in winter, Julie. You're in summer. Ju Julie's the opposite of us. England is in a uh, winter, right? I don't remember. I'm not good with geography. Very hot and high humidity. It's perfect for your hair, right? <laughs> Get you that frizzy hair going. All right, so we'll put that in here. And I found this, I had already started it. It's some pockets that I put on here. And it's another book page out of a gardening book. I'm gonna blow my nose, so pardon me. All right, use some hand sanitizer here. Yeah, y'all need to sit back and chill because winter is not over yet. <laughs> Hope to have autumn before going straight into winter. All right, so what can we put on this side? I've got a couple of these calico collage images. Oh, and I have, I have some stamped images, but I don't know if I want to, um, maybe we'll put a little strip here for writing. I don't know. I don't know. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's look to see what I have in my white paper pad. <laughs> I've got, this is a page out of a journal. I hate to, uh, ah, I know what I can do. So if I cut this, let's see what happens if I do this. So that's my mid section of this. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of line these up and look at this piece. This piece is approximately, let's make it 
let's do four and a half inches. Okay. So if I were to put this right here, I could put this below. Put this one over here and then put that like that and then add some distress inks. And then do we want to have this flip out or do I glue it completely down? Don't do humidity, no fun. Don't like the heat. <laughs> what is wrong? Oh no. Oh no, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and distress the backside just in case. I could use some washi tape to stick that down. Robin says, glue down. All right, so put that right there. I'm wondering if I have another. To layer that. I don't want to cover that up, but maybe we could add a little piece of paper behind here just to add some color. I kind of like that. Again, just using the scraps. Are these pages coming out of a random box of pages? You're having a crazy time organizing. You know, um, here's what I did. I have, I made these little drawers. They're boxes. And this is just resting in here. And what I've been doing is I'll go around and I'll collect things that I think I want to use in my journal and put them all in here. And then I just start pulling them out. Um, in the case of today, I went ahead and folded some of them together, and then I have a little scrap bin of what I've been working on recently, okay? But what I also do is I sort by color. So these are all blue scraps, and as you can see, there's a lot. I believe this is a 12 by 14 Ziploc type bag, and here in America, we have um, some priority mailboxes. And so what I've done is I just covered it with book pages and then I colored the front with Tattered Angels. You could use acrylic paint, whatever you want to color it. And I haven't made my official labels yet, but I'll put a label here that says blue. And then when I'm done with my project, in theory, I will go through this bin and I will sort it by color and put them everything away. Does that make sense? So that's what I do with my scraps. I also put things, let me grab one, if I can get a hold of it. Oh. So sometimes when I clean off my desk, it all just goes into a Ziploc bag. And then when I feel up to it, I pull out this bag and I'll start sorting or I'll pull things out of this to use. Does that make sense? I hope. Okay. All right. So I'm going to glue this piece down. I think what I want to do first, just so that I get it centered on my page really well, let's close that. And then I'm going to glue down this piece. You'll have that layout. Okay, good. Thank you. Heavy storms and rain. We need some rain here. Not when the temperature drops, before the temperature drops, or after the temperature rises. <laughs> this is a rubber stamp. It's called Dog Rose, and it's two separate pieces, and I just stamped it on some coffee dyed paper. OK. 
Okay, and then position this down just a smidge. Do I have it too far? No. Okay. And then I'll glue this piece down. I, I find it's easier if I sort by color and then when I want to do a project I just go grab that color bin in a sense or, or bag and then uh, pull out things that I will use. I've here recently I've just been keeping them right here beside me. I have a shelf on the other side of the room where they're stored the rest of the time. Uh, when I'm using them I try to have them next to me as best I can. Okay we'll go this way. And this one I'm going to glue up here. And, you know, Julie, you were talking earlier about having card bases, in a sense, um, so that you could make things quickly. You could also use your scraps of dyed, coffee dyed papers, more solid colored papers, and just stamp them with some images that you love. And then that way they're ready. So, you know, I have, a, I have a little bin here. These go in here. Um, of little fussy cut images that I've had out working on them and that way I have stuff you know available I don't have to spend a whole lot of time going through everything okay, let's put that right here okay okay Okay, what did I miss? I missed something. All right. Yeah, we get busy, get busy with life, right? Hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to send some message to a couple people, but take some time today or tomorrow morning and send a message to somebody that you probably haven't spoke to in a while and tell them you're thinking about them. Oh yeah, do some masculine cards too. Yep, that's a good idea. Let them know that you're thinking about them. You know, just, hey, I just want you to know I was thinking about you today. I hope you're well. Don't have to be anything else. Don't have to say anything back. I have this butterfly. I think that looks pretty. This is a, I think it was either a die, but I think it may have been cut on my Cricut a long time ago because I haven't used my Cricut in a while. I still have it. I may get a wild hair someday and use it, <laughs> but I found these in my stash. So I thought, well, why not? We'll use one of them. So I'm just adding a little bit of distressing. This was some uh, scrapbook cardstock that I used my die cutting, electronic die cutter on. I think that would be pretty right there. Ooh, what about this one? Do we want to put it in the center or over to the edge? We could turn it this way. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, thank you, Peony. Thank you. Is it Penny or Peony? Because I, I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go through my cards I made the past few weeks. Ooh, what about this blue one? I don't know if it's too wide. Oh, too wide. Gotta be more narrow. There we go. This one will work. Oh, here's a purple one. There we go. I 
like this. Okay. Hard to choose. You can't decide which way to go, Julie. All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue down the die cut shape. All righty. Okay, and I'll put it in the middle. Let's put it right in the middle. These are stamped on watercolor paper, and then I used my watercolor paints to color them, and then I fussy cut them out. Just type exclamation point boss the next time that comes up. And basically, it's just silliness. It's just something to keep y'all entertained while you're waiting on me to, you know, glue a page down or something. And you accumulate junk bucks. You like the flower? Okay. Perny. Okay, gotcha. Like a flower. Perny. Okay. Of course, you're from someplace else, so you, you say it different than I do. <laughs> I think we didn't put some bling on these when I made them, and I thought I saw over here. Here they are. So let's add some bling. Okay. This has adhesive on the back side, so I'm just going to grab one and stick it down. Hey, hey, Raven! It's so good to see you in the chat. Hello, hello, hello! Got lots of people's in today. Thank y'all for being here. Okay, this in my bin. All right. So, do we want this? I think we'll make that the center because I like the way that looks. So, I put that in here. All right. So here's where you can choose. If you want to go ahead and bind this together as a journal, or if you want to leave it loose and then just attach it to the journal temporarily with like wine, uh, uh, wine, uh, yarn. I don't know. I said wine. <laughs> so do you want me to bind this as if it is a journal or do you want me to show only sliding it into the journal where it has a piece of yarn holding it to our cover. Okay. So basically we get my page over here. Oh yeah, I haven't done anything with this one yet. What do we got here? So there's a journal card there. This is rather plain, so we can decorate that up. I have a couple of cards that I made a while back. So I'm thinking, so I don't have to make one right now. Put that in here. It barely sticks out, but we could add something to this and put it behind there so it's layered up and then we'll add some color to this piece oh well i'm sorry you've been sick i hope you get better you prefer it as a signature as part of the journal gotcha you prefer binding it yep yep okay well we'll bind we'll bind this together and that will come out of, the, I'm going to leave it as it come out of the journal, but it would be one piece that would come out whole. Okay. I can't remember. Okay. That is holding something on the other side. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And I think I want to add some thing pretty on here. I've got this pink piece of paper. It's almost the right size. Let's see what else I have already cut, if anything. 
I have this purple. That really sticks out, doesn't it? I think I like that better. Okay, well, I'll bind it together then. All right, I'm going to trim this piece down. So I'm going to use my ruler to determine the size. So this is approximately two and a quarter. So if I made a two inch piece by three and a half, two by three, two by three, two by three, two by three and a half, two by three and a half. Yeah, let's do that so we can get some. This was a gel print. Okay, that'll go there. Let's add some distress inks to that. Yeah, it's bubble wrap that was pressed to a gel plate. You do the gel plate and coat it with paint, and then you press a piece of bubble wrap into it. And then I add another color of paint over the top of that and then pull it. Okay. Let's put that right here. Bulb plants. That's from the Amarillo Rose. Amarillo Rose. Amarillo Rose. Okay, let's put that right here. All right, now let's see. Okay, I've got this little card that was started. So let's add that together and we'll put it in this pocket so we get lots of color. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty fun to use though the bubble wrap on your gel plate. Okay. Go around the back. Okay. So let's glue these two pieces together. And then we need to decorate the blank journal card that's here in the pocket. So I'm just lining this up. was something I stamped a long time ago. I think that is from uh, Tim Holtz. So I'm going to put that in here. Okay. And then this piece we're going to take out and I'll glue this down. I'll go ahead and glue it down that you can, if you want to put something in the back part of it. So I'll just glue down the side. Then that way it'll be a right in the middle kind of a floating pocket page. Okay. I'll put my block on there for a moment. All right, so let's add some distress inks to this piece. Do we want to add, I didn't use this pink earlier, so we could either put it across the top. Let me see if I've got a smaller scrap. Ooh, I have that piece. Let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add some distressings to this. Hey, 
Ada. I'm so glad you were here today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We had a good, good crowd today. Thank you all so much. I, I greatly appreciate y'all being here. I, to be honest, I was not feeling my best this morning. I got up and, and ate breakfast and I fixed my hair, got dressed, did my nails. And I was just, I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I just felt so exhausted. So I just went ahead and took a nap <laughs> at 1030 this morning because <laughs> I was tired. So I thank you for coming and being here because I feel like it was worth it that I took a little nap. Oh, you know what we haven't done? Let's do some sewing. So let's get the sewing lamb out. Thank you, Giovanna, for the sewing lamb. And what I'm going to do is glue this down and then we'll stitch on it. So I'm just adding some glue right down the middle because I'm going to stitch around the outside edge. Okay, I thought something fell. It did. Okay. All right. Basically, this will fit like that, and I'll stitch around that edge. There. Pardon me. If you ha if you need a nap and have time for it, go for it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I filled. <laughs> Naps save you all the time. Yeah, it helps, doesn't it? All right, let's stitch this. Sewing cam. All right, so as I say in almost every video where I stitch, I have a regular sewing machine. I have it set up for a zigzag stitch. I have black thread in my upper and my lower. I do recommend that if you're gluing a piece of paper that you wait for that glue to dry or you only put it like in the middle so it's not out to the edge where you're going to sew. And be careful. And that way, if it is wet, you're going to have gummy mess. So don't do that. Let it dry. <laughs> you nap in your recliner a lot. I don't blame you. Ducks can be pretty comfy. All right, we're just going to make a little rectangle. Maybe we'll even grab... Um, a stamped word to put in that upper portion. So that's what it looks like with the gel. That's a gel print on a book page. Mm. All right, go to sleep, little lamb. Put that all the way. Let's see what works. I don't know if that's too big. We could put memories in the center of that. We could do a believe in yourself. Let's do believe in yourself. That gives us a little bit more of the background that we can see. All right, let's glue that together and put it in the pocket. Then we're going to bind this journal pages that I've been working on today and attach it to my accordion fold journal. And then we'll make something to go in this pocket. And that'll be the last thing I do today, I think. All right, so I'm just going to slide that in here and let it, pardon me, stick up just a little bit there. Okay. This paper clip is holding something on the other side that I, pardon me, I haven't finished yet. All right, so let's set this aside for a second. Let me get my book binding tools. So I've got my wax linen thread. I have a needle. I grab a couple of clips. Thank you. I think Robin gave me, I think she gave me this size. I don't remember if she gave me the little one or the big ones, but thank you, Robin, for the clippies because I do use them. All right, so I'm going to make sure that this is pretty much in the center. 
all my pages. You can offset them if you would rather have one at the top, one at the bottom. But I'm going to go ahead and put them in the center and then I'll use these clips to hold them together. Okay, I'm going to use three times the height of this journal. So one, two, and three and cut this. Put this back where it belongs. I've got a little template here. If you need a template, I have them on my website. You can print it or you can just make your own. I like to have mine evenly spaced. So I'm just going to punch here and here. I'm using the Tim Holtz Tonic Studio craft pick because it's a small needle on that because you don't need a giant hole unless you're doing yarn or something but I don't recommend binding a journal with yarn because it will loosen up yeah we got the, she got this at the dollar store Athena likes to sleep Hercules took a nap on me today I went to the bedroom and laid down and here comes Hercules and he just laid right on my belly <laughs> that. I'm doing a pamphlet stitch where I just make three holes. I'm going back in through the center. And I'll come around from the outside, poke down through, and then I will slip this one underneath here. Okay. Come on. And then we want to kind of pull these in opposite directions and make sure that it's tight here. I'm using wax linen thread. Ah, get yourself a cat so you can have naps. <laughs> ah. I'm going to leave those long in case we decide to put charms on those at another day. All right, put those back in my little pouch that says junk journal tools. Oh, I forgot to put the needle away. A needle away, a needle away. <laughs> Is that the way that goes? Okay, so now we'll go over here and I want to attach this to my journal. So I'm going to grab some yarn. I pre-cut some yarn so I didn't have to have all of them laying out here. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it up to the center and then close my journal and rotate it towards me so I can see. Now I could have bound it to this so you can see that it's got about a quarter of an inch, but instead I wanted to do the yarn. So I'm just going to line that up and tie it. It's not super tight, but it's something. So now when we go back to our journal. So this one has, is not bound together. It's just in the uh, yarn. And then when we get to this one, it's actually bound together so they won't shift. Okay. They're, they're secure, but you could take this whole thing out and write on it and then stick it back in. Let's make something for this pocket. Use the very big paper clips. I use those too. I have found with the paper clips, if I have a chunky monkey journal, they have a tendency to spring off. So I like these little clippies that Robin gave me because they seem to help hold it tight. Okay. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Oh, you know, I already have a card made laying here. Let's see if we've got one that 
I have this one. Let's see how it looks. That looks pretty good right there, doesn't it? And then we'll just add something on top of here. What do I have that we could choose? Do something like that. I may have some pre done ones. Let's see. Oh, wait, let's look here. I have this long skinny that I started. It's a piece of fabric sewed to a piece of copy dye paper. You know what we could do is we could add a paper clip here to hold that in place. And it does have coffee dye paper on the back. So let's do it like that. All right, so I need something to make a pocket out of, right? Or a, not a pocket, a uh, altered paper clip. Let's put this back up here. I know it's not Easter yet, but wouldn't that be a cute little altered paper clip right there? That's from one of Norella's Easter, I think it's Easter bunnies. So what if I were to make that into a altered paper clip? Do we want it that big? We could add another piece of paper behind it. Do we want to do a collaged paper? What else do I have here in my scrappy scraps? The scrappiest of scrappy scraps. What if we did something like that? I don't know, maybe? He didn't wipe you out, did he? I love the, the sound of ice in your cup. Oh. <laughs> Gotta have ice. We bought a countertop ice maker. We like ice in our beverages here in this household. And we were using an ice maker in the freezer of our refrigerator, but it doesn't make ice consistently and it would freeze in the door and then you couldn't get it out. So we just decided to buy a countertop brand style and that I feel works better for us. All right, let's glue these pieces down. Boss was brutal today. <laughs> so basically I'm making a journal card first, but it's going to become an altered paper clip. It's going to be a big one. All right, so we'll cut this off. And then we'll glue this piece down. This was a gel print scrap. Cut this off. Cut this off. And I'll put the little scraps. The tiny, tiny scrap goes in the trash. Oh, uh, my, I, mine's a real pale color. I don't make it super strong. Okay. I kind of like that. Now, do we want another frame or I know what we can do. Let's, let's go to the sewing machine and we'll stitch around that. 
and then we'll add the oh yes there's a raffle i need to i just remember let's pick the raffle for the junk bucks and i have thank you for reminding me i have a little journal that i'll give away here in just a few minutes so y'all if you have it everybody's eligible to get in the raffle and we're going to go over to the sewing machine one more time. I'm going to add some distress inks to the edges of this where I cut the paper off. There. All right, let's go to the sewing machine. I know countertop ice maker. What is this sorcery? It's crazy. I love it because you pour the water in it and it just makes ice and it melts right back into the basket where it pulls the water back out. We use distilled water. We don't use tap water because of the impurities that can be in our tap water. And I don't know. It works really good. We, we've been very fortunate that we like it and it works for us. All right, so I'm just going to stitch around this little cutesy image from Calico Blush. All right, so there's my card piece. I'm not, I didn't get back over here. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. You drink so much more water because of your ice maker. I agree. I do too. I think it's handy. I like it. I like it, Raven. I do too, Amanda. I mean, it, it makes a difference, I think. Okay, so we need to put a paper clip on here. How do I want to do that? Normally, I kind of glue it. What do I have here? I've got a little piece of paper. <laughs> All right. How do I want to do this? Oh. Oh, my back. My back is tarred. All right. So I want this to go on the page like that. So, I'm going to get a piece of paper. So, I've got a little piece of paper here. I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. I'm going to slip this paper clip over. This could also become a double-sided paper clip the way that I'm doing this. So I'm going to glue this piece down in here. Make sure I go all the way to the edges. You could also tape it down with a piece of packing tape or something. And I'm going to fold this edge over just a smidge. Okay. So it, it goes right over the edge of our paper clip here. And I'll add a little glue right here. And I'm just going to glue another piece of paper right on top of that, you know, and I could get away with just using a scrap. Over the top of there, I may get a little bigger piece, a little bit bigger. Here we go. Throw that in the trash. I'm just covering the paper clip. So we got this piece here that you can 
slip your journal card in and then slip the whole thing onto your pocket page like that. How's that? I needed to add a little something here. So what do we want to add? Do we want to add a word? Let's add a word. How about kind? Like that. Trying to catch up. Get those junk bucks, right? Ah, you use the silicone ice trays that are beehive shaped. The ice is supposed to last longer. Oh, well, that's cool. All right, let's put that right here like this. Okay, let's pick a winner of the 200 junk bucks, and then we'll just kind of flip through what we did today. And I will raffle off this little journal here in just a second. Okay, so I'll give you a second. I see a boss bite. It's another game. But only one wins. That's right. Yep. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's see who wins. The... Oh, yeah, Sheila won. All right, let's pick the winner of 200 junk bucks, and that winner is da 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 da. Connie Barge, congratulations. I'll get that added to your account. And then we're going to give away one um, unicorn mini junk journal that I made a while back. So we're going to open that up. So everybody is eligible to enter to win this journal the unicorn one and so I am going to open it up so you can see what it looks like this is where I had done some mixed media papers on I think it was a oversized postcard that you get in the mail and then I attached some ribbon to the opening this is one of calico collages little unicorn images rubber stamp rubber stamp this is a gel print gel print gel print and then I made a couple of journal cards out of some more of the oversized postcards. I just backed it with a few things, like my gel prints. Gel print, a stencil paper. This is a book page that I stenciled. I stitched it with my sewing machine instead of hand sewing it. And then here is a journal here. Oh, I need to sign it. I don't remember when I made it, so I'm just going to sign it with my name. It won't have the date. Because it's been a while. There. It's been signed. I should have got my stamp out that says handmade by, but this is what we're doing. This is it. Okay? So y'all enter the raffle for that. Okay. Tie that shut again. Set that to the side. So y'all enter the raffle. All right, so here's what we did. I made an ultra paper clip to hold this really flexible bookmark slash uh, journal tag. And then this was a journal card that I made during all my lives where I showed hearts and Valentine love type themed items. So that goes in here. And then today we did some stenciling on the back side and stamping. And then this was out of a book page, and I just layered it onto a piece of white cardstock that I added some blue. And then this was something I made a long time ago. It's just a piece of paper that I folded up to look like a little envelope and used a rubber stamped image there. Rubber stamp. That was one of my watercolor flowers that I hand painted. One of Norella's images there, and I can't remember which one, but this is from Unicorn Dreams. This was stationary. I did the wild four stencil here. This was dyed with Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. That's what this was. Dragonfly stamp, one of my mixed media book pages and stamped in the background. And a piece of 
hymnal and stamping and some flowers. The same flower over here. This is from one of the heart journal uh, cards that I made in pockets. So another one here where I just layered up some scraps. Book page. On this side I used some coffee dyed paper that I stamped and added another calico collage. So this was um, a mop-up paper that I made by uh, spraying with tattered angels and laying the paper down and then lifting this up. And that's what I got was this pattern. And I didn't add anything on the other side. Uh, this was another one of those pages or cards that I made during the live stream where I added some layers of colors. This was a die cut that I had in my stash. This was out of a journal that I had that had images on both sides. And I just cut it apart and used it so you could see the images on both sides. Um, stamped images here. Uh, Norella's images here. That I think I have a link in the description box if you like her images. It's a digital download. Here's another mixed media card. This was a book page that was painted purple and then I stamped over the top of it. And this was another piece of paper that I've done some mixed media collage painting on. And then I cut out this heart and watercolored the flower. Another watercolor flower. I'm going this side. One of Norella's digital papers. Rubber stamp, rubber stamp. This is my Corner Roses rubber stamp. More calico collage, calico collage there. And then I added this book page that I turned into a pocket. And just This was some Beeline Design stamps that I had stamped out a while back and I decided to use them. I've had them, might as well use them. And I feel that it gives it that eclectic look when you kind of mix things up. And then this was a uh, beeline design that I had for a while. Uh, I think that was a Tim Holtz onto some uh, K and Company paper, I think. So that's what I've done so far. And so this is getting chunky. So currently it is, if I squeeze, a little bit. It's about two and a half inches, maybe almost three inches thick so far. <laughs> it's going to be a chunky monkey. So it will basically, you'll flip it and you'll flip it. This will become a journal here. This will flip. This will be a journal here. This is the last back book cover. I need to put something decorative on here and I'll add a way to bind the journal close, tie it close. And then you go this way and there's pockets and more little journals that I've put on the other side. So I've still got a few elements that I need to work with. Like I've paper clipped these just temporarily because I thought I'd like that layout. And then here's some more pieces that I've made, some more to be a journal cover, and then we're back at the front. So it's kind of like a never-ending journal. You just kind of keep flips, flips, flips. Yeah, I love color. That's that's very much true. I like to use color. I know that there's a lot of people that love the sepia and vintage looks, but I prefer color. I don't want everything all brown. <laughs> But wait, there's more. So it keeps going. All right, so let's pick a winner of the Unicorn Junk Journal. I need to get my little notepads out. I think I put them away, so I'll have to find them. Oh, I see them over there. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Ada. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Peony. Yeah, there's a lot of fun in there. Thank you, Amanda. I'll be working on this some more. You want me to continue next week working on this? I found another journal that I haven't finished yet, so... I've got a couple that I've been working on off and on. <laughs> All right, let's pick a winner of this journal, the little unicorn junk journal. Let's see if we got everybody in. All right, pick a winner. Sheila, congratulations. You won the little mini journal. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Margie. I, I like the colorful stuff. That's what I like doing. It's fun. It's fun, fun, fun. It's fun, fun, fun. Tell my daddy, taste her t-bird away. 
<laughs> all righty well henry will be home here in a little bit i may take another little nap because i'm kind of tired <laughs> tired today thank you all for being here and supporting me in a live stream i greatly appreciate it um I hope that you're inspired to create. Do some creative things. Make something. Reach out to someone you haven't talked to in a while and tell them you're thinking about them. And spread a little kindness. You know, a smile. Just saying thank you to someone that holds the door for you or whatever it may be. Just spread a little kindness, okay? Uh, thank you, Esther. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alrighty, well, I'm going to get off of here so we get to the the shutdown mode. Thank you again. If you uh, watch this, please leave a comment after the live is over. Tell me what you thought was your favorite part. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask those down below and I will do my best to answer those. And next week, I haven't decided, but uh, I may continue on this unless you say uh, you want to see something else. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all have an amazing week. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.